Hello everybody and welcome to another On the Workbench session. This one's episode 38. This one we're going to go back to basing, a little bit different type of basing. Now, you've seen me do the movement trays for Song of Ice and Fire. Well, this is actually part of a, I guess it could be a movement tray, but this is going to be a magnetized carrying case. It's for the Table War Tower case. So you can see this, I lift that up. See, this is 3D printed here and then this is part of the regular case. There's a piece of sheet metal on the bottom of this. You'll see that later, but I just want to introduce this to you now. So this is actually, this is something that Kathy and I both worked on. This is part of the Table Wars charity raffle that was going to take place at Adepticon. Now it sort of takes place on its own afterwards, so, or in its place. But what we want to do is, on this part here, this sort of, printed 3d printed res uh, plastic thing we want to get a continuation of the lava stuff and the lava stuff was not super complicated it was just our and i'm gonna change my focus here a little bit for you now so you can see these pieces it's the bulletin board cork you've certainly seen me use this before right and we'll just use different kinds of rocks and gravel we are going to actually use the fast drying glue. Here we're going to see how that works for a larger surface like this. And I do believe this is what Kathy was using because she actually made the bases in the first place. I did not make those. So this is going to be an extra challenge because she took a little different tack on these and I have to try and match those. So I thought that could be a fun little challenge for you to see. And again, we're going to do some magnetizing. So. There's a few different types of rare earth magnets out there. Now, I use these for, for Song of Ice and Fire miniatures for a while, but we've got these guys right here. There we go. Now, these are a little bit too big, and we'll, we'll go over to this because you can see, look at that, how powerful those things are. This is a little too powerful because what could happen is, well, it holds your miniatures down there real nice. It's also going to let your miniatures get probably ripped off of the... There's just so much hold there, your miniatures are going to get just right off the bases, even though they're pinned down there. So we're probably going to use these magnets right here. Because these are plastic, they're light enough. We don't need to be using the really heavy rare earth magnets. So you're going to see these guys over here. You'll see the sand and gravel eh, texture paste, whatever it is. And we're going to work with these guys here. Now, again, these have to be different heights so we're really going to be breaking this up now we're just going to strategically place this around here see if we can make some kind of a composition that also works overall with how the rest of this was done so you can see there's the metal tray underneath there and believe me i had to put position these around a few times to get them all to fit on here so this this was a little bit of what would you say I don't know, tetris or whatever that game is or you have to fit all the pieces together and such so with all the pointy things yeah it was a little bit of a challenge get them all stick in there i'm going to show you boom the tower case in question so we're on the table wars website so you see right over here the display board thing the mini display board and you see these unit tray things see that right there the double wide bottom unit tray this is obviously the single wide right here it's metal and then I believe these are your printed things that, yeah, the toppers that go, hey, on top of that. So we are going to try and make all that stuff work together. And I think if you look at my blog, you can see, I think we've got the, yeah, the half size case. We don't have the mini or the full. Well, the full would really be nice, but we've got the half size case. And we've taken that to more than one convention, and it's been really handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our, our paste out here, our glue, some sand, gravel, and we're going to make a mess uh, breaking up a whole bunch of this stuff because, well, yeah, <laughs> we're going to make ourselves a nice, healthy mess. Maybe we even throw a few skulls out there just for, just for kicks. Maybe we even sculpt a sneaky snake or something like that. So we'll be right back with all that next. So first things first, we are going to try and make something out of what we've got here. Now, 
Remember the bulletin board cork. It's really easy to break. I mean, boom, look at that. We definitely like pieces along these lines because look at that. It's a nice little piece right there we can throw in here. We've got a nice piece like that. See how you got a little bit of a steer step? And I am thinking, and then we did this with the movement tray, if you remember. Look at that. So see, it starts to set a little bit of an edge right here. We've got another nice little piece. Oh, look at that. Get another nice edge. Hey, we even got one of these flat edge pieces like that. I mean, we put it there for now. Remember, we did that with our Song of Ice and Fire bases. Another nice piece. Here's that. See, that now that it is too tight of a fit right there. I'm not going to make it any smaller. We'll just see how that fits. But... So I've got this right here, and one of the things Kathy did do was she pulled away some of the tops of these to make them a little bit shallower. So you can see, look at that. It doesn't have that flat top on it anymore, and maybe that goes over here. So now this, the hero, or the leader, or whatever, looks like they're a little bit taller than that. So I think that's pretty neat. I'm going to find myself a couple more of these. So what I'm going to do, look at this. Basically just got two pieces out of one here. I'm going to set that down. And you can see what happened. Look at this. So this is kind of nice. We have a big piece and then we have progressively smaller pieces. We're going to do that here. Got a bunch of nifty pieces like this. All I want to do is just position these guys. We will we'll worry about gluing these down later. I just want to... I'm in search of some good... Like this. As much as we would love this for a base. I mean, look at that. It goes up like this. goes over the edge. Uh, you know what? Here, we're going to... Snip off that piece. There's something about this little composition. I'm going to move this up a bit for you. I kind of like the composition of this right here. I think perhaps... Mm, I'll stay, I'll take a little bit of this away here. A little more... Mm, let me see what happens when I just throw this right in there. So I'm going to move this what it needs to be. There. Oh, yeah, we got too much of a straight-looking edge there. If I Ah, that's better. Remember, we had to do this to a lot of our pieces that fit in between the circular areas on those Song of Ice and Fire Trace of Big improvement right there. Big improvement. It, you can see how easy it is to just rip some of this stuff away. I'm gonna, so that's a nice piece that I'm just going to save. Nice piece there. And we'll do a similar thing right here. So we're going to rip that off the top. And nice. Another nice piece. Mm, that's going to go... Perhaps, and now nah, that's that's just too big, too big. Got tons of these smaller pieces here. I'm gonna see if I've got it with an easy reach a tweezers, which I think I do here. Not that that is gonna make life any easier, it seems. Oh, let's go there with it. Again, search for handy little pieces here. What else? What else? What about this guy? Where could you go? I think if I rip the top off of this, that could be Something that could go in between these guys. Yeah. So see what happens there? 
it goes it sort of wraps around the bases it fits in it wraps around this space but now it, it's kind of forms a bit of a composition over here too so i'm thinking you got your bigger rocks small progressively smaller rocks uh, Yes, there will be times my ugly hand gets kind of in the way, and you get to see the back of my hand. And I apologize, that is not meant to be an insult of any kind, but see how we're making a bunch of little compositions around here? Now, not necessarily all of those gaps have to be filled in 100% with the, with the cork. There, there could be some blank areas too, because, well, then that's uh, areas for lava flow right that's going to be a blank area there too but i want to see if which is the best area for this guy here now i really don't sweat this kind of stuff too much i know some people they get really i mean it has to be just right for me uh, sometimes it's a matter of think long, think wrong. You just you ponder it a little too much. You know, second guess yourself and second guessing yourself. <laughs> you don't want to outsmart yourself because none of us are smart enough to withstand being outsmarted by ourselves, if that makes any sense. And actually, I'm looking at my camera to see is there is there a gap that I wanna fill? I'm just thinking about you, right there. And no, there's no glue on my tweezers. They just wanna stick to this thing for whatever reason. Okay, yeah. So I I like that. I like that. I'm good with that. I can always, like I said, I see avid even more real tiny rocks here. We certainly have them. We got lots of little pieces here. But now that the glue and other stuff gets involved, well, the miniatures go away. However, I do need to put these in a place where they are where they're supposed to be. So just let me find myself a nice, nice spot here, a safe place to put these guys. Well, they are not going to get in the way. There we go. I get my gravel back out here. Some of my sand. Let's just put these in some semblance of how they're supposed to go. Now oh, let's do this. These guys. Now you can really see the metal tray in action all right good to go couple of different that what i'd like to do ideally is just have a whole bunch of this covering it and then we go in but uh, yeah as much as i'd like to do that i really want to keep these in place i want i like where they are tempted to just super glue them down but well let's see what we get here Let's see what happens. So this is again the Luke's APS. And I don't want to do too much because it'll just kind of seep out from under the edges. But if you remember, it dries pretty quick. Now that, that was too much of a straight edge there. And I'm actually going to leave that more of an open. I'll let that be a little more open, believe it or not. So instead, I gonna go like that like so and again now it's there's it's not rocket science we're just we're gluing pieces down but there's times where timing is everything especially sometimes when it comes to basing and letting things dry and everything else now the other thing too, especially the way Kathy did these, she has sand on the top of them. So that's something you 
you almost never see me do. You see me sometimes take the little bit of the, maybe the sand and gravel paste or the red oxide or whatever you want to call it. And I'll put a little bit of that on the tops of the my rocks to, yeah, it's going to go boom, like that and like that. Get this down. I, I did want to leave some open spaces. So here I, I can see there's some big open spaces, but, well, that just gives me a chance to maybe have some kind of fun with the, the lava effects too because, well, as much as this is about building the base, the, the painting part of it is sort of important too. I mean, you, it's not like you haven't seen me paint bases like these before, but you certainly haven't seen me do an entire movement tray. This is also not like the Song of Ice and Fire stuff because it's not uniform. The, the Song of Ice and Fire thing, it was kind of easy to predict what piece was going to go where because it was all just so even. Every gap was the exact same size. Not quite the case here. Not quite the case. Oh, you still need some glue over here. And you can see I've got a whole scattering of all these little pieces all over the place. I can grab those if I need. All right, you are down, you are down. I think there's just a couple of pieces here that need their glue. Like that. All right. Next up, I'm just going to take something like this. I'm going to take something like uh, this, one of our beat up old brushes. I think uh, last time maybe you saw me using this was on the Harad bases, I'm going to say. Let's get a healthy amount of this. Now here, I'm also I'm tempted to throw a little bit of the the glue in there too. Now remember, some of these pastes they don't actually really like that too much. Uh, we're gonna find out if this one gets stringy or not. So I'm not seeing stringy, so I think we're okay. I think it's good. You know, I'm gonna throw a little more in there, just a bit more. I'm going to continue to mix this up. Then I'm going to shift my focus back down onto the tray here. I'm going to have to probably pour out more of this. And well, probably, certainly, we'll have to put out some more of this. But I'm going to grab myself another, there, another one of these. Again, we're going to switch our focus down to bing. There we go. And you can see this has a nice little texture to it. Now, these pieces, they're going to move. If I had done super glue, well, they wouldn't have shifted around. But it's really not that big a deal. In fact, I'm going to work in the areas that don't have those for right now, just to give them a few extra moments to stay in place. And if I get too frustrated, <laughs> there's a couple of things I can do. I say, all right, you're going to be that way. Well, there, how's that? <laughs> so they're in place, right? So I kind of marked where they were. Guess what? I'm just going to do that now. Of course, it wants to stick to me and not there because that's the one thing I have noticed about the Luke's APS is it has this weird tendency to really want to stick to you and not to the surface. It's kind of like green stuff. Another one of those fun things. I don't really have to worry about getting right up to the doorstep of these things because, well, since the glue is kind of pushed out underneath there, well... That means that the sand and gravel is going to stick to that too. Now I'm just going to ditch that for a smaller one here. Put 
but I, th I think you can see we're, we're trying to make this more than just a we're doing more than just texturizing this because well they already printed a texture on this we want to do maybe a bit more than that so you can see there's some ridges there some higher points and I am you can see I, I'm starting to sweep it up the edge of that particular piece so it looks like the larger pieces they're a little more willing to stay in place maybe they got a little more glue on them whatever and there's absolutely nothing that says I can't go back in here with some more of the sandy paste afterwards now that I don't want because otherwise the base is not going to fit in there now is this going to be one of those things where the bases really truly just disappear it's hard to do that because the bases have beveled edge the only way you're ever going to be able to do that is what are those the the mdf bases right now i know reaper also has some some of their bases have a perfectly vertical edge on them and those now those could potentially hide that edge because well it you're you're talking vertical to vertical here you're looking at vertical to horizontal or, or vertical to beveled so you're not going to get a complete well what would you say hiding of that edge no it's, it's no big deal i don't i think it's not going to matter very much so there are another area where i just put a little more in a little bit more of that in now we're also uh, you get the idea of what's happening here I'll do this for a few minutes more you really don't need to see me do this endlessly I'm just trying to get you through the basics here really look at see that's that's one area where we can kind of integrate those that larger rock into the rest of the surface here but what I don't want to do is go too far and, and then not put the sand and gravel on there because it's I don't want this to dry that much I, I'd rather just have the full adhesive properties of this now I did what would you say I, I magnified how much adhesion there is with this by mixing in the the APS glue so there's that too but I think we're almost good to go for throwing down some of our sand and gravel now I'm gonna take a look at what Kathy did we will we'll match it as close as possible I mean everybody has their own way of, of applying things like that so I will try and do my best to match what she did will it be exactly the same it's not going to be exactly the same because it's even if I watched every second of what she did it's not gonna be the same when you guys when I see you guys doing bases based on tutorials from from here or even from the youtube channel or whatever it it's it's very similar but there's still a little bit of difference and that's just that's okay there's that's bound to happen you're going to put your little twist on it which is a good thing so i'm going to say that is enough you're now going to do some and get some of that sand and gravel out here like you do so we are gonna get a look at something that Kathy did here so you can see there's not a lot of big rocks down there I'll look at a few of these you can see that the whereas mine sometimes has a lot of those larger rocks I am gonna throw in just a couple of more doodads here while I've got the glue and everything else going oh, I'm gonna put one over here I think all right, there we go. Let's just let's leave that now. I'm going to do just a couple of these. Just a few 
part of it is that well, this is the this is the tray. It's a, it's a larger. It's more like you're working on the whole thing instead of just individual bases. So I think having a few of these larger rocks, and you can see where they congregate. They're congregating around the rocks, especially where most of the heaviest glue applications would be. So that's going to stick there. And now we're going to move on to this is some sand. It's I guess more of a coarse sand when you think about it. I want to, we are going to focus first on the areas closest to our main rock piles. Rock piles or rock outcroppings, whatever the heck they are, I don't really care. I just don't get that involved in nomenclature. Don't have time for it. So I'm gonna yeah, I'll throw a few out here, but that's that's good there. Now I'm actually gonna grab a different so I got uh, this this is actually the Luke's APS. This is their rubble, concrete and rubble blend here. Okay, it's, it's also fine sand, but there's a few what would you say coarser grains involved. We're just gonna spread it out there. Spread that out like you do. And what I'm going to do is carry on with the rest of this tray, and then we're going to see what we do with the, the tops of these guys because we got to match what Kathy did. And I think once I have this in place and let that settle, we should be good to go. All right. A little more. And so there you have it. I'm going to do the rest of this here. We'll be right back as we try and do. There's a good example here. You can see that little bit of texture on the top there. That's that's going to be our next our next goal right there. We'll be right back. So let's work in the final texture that's on the top of these. Now I did that down towards the bottom here. You can't really see it too much, but what it seemed the best idea was to kind of brush some of this on here. This will form a, a decent part of the texture. And I really do have to cover this up more so than usual. I think you see me sometimes, like I said, add a little bit of texture on the tops of these guys. Here we're going to put some more. A little bit more. Again, just using the... That's got some of the, the glue in it too. This last little mound over here. I also don't have to worry about a miniature on top of these, so if they're not even, what's the big deal? Not a problem. Okay, I think that just about solves that issue there. How about a little more? And I think this is actually perfect. This is that, that Luke's APS. This is more their fine rubble. And what am I going to do? It's almost like the fine sand. It's got it's kind of a combination of fine sand and that coarser sand. We're just going to throw that over the top. And I think that gives me just about what I'm looking for. So there we go. Now, I would like to magnetize those bases, but I think I'm going to wait. I am. I just want to try something here while we're, we're waiting. I'm going to see. So here's the thing. Now, this magnet here, you may not be able to see it, but it's just a little bit shy of the plastic tray there. It's not. It doesn't go all the way down. 
a couple of ways we can do it. We can take so just some green stuff and basically stick the magnet here on with the green stuff. Or we can just glue one of these on here and see, is there just enough tension? Because we've got metal to magnet that might be just enough to hold it. Now, that's going to go here. So what I am going to do is just grab a touch of super glue. Ideally, I actually would have liked to have the that heavy... Oh, never mind. I have some right here. So this, because this is from the Song of Ice and Fire figures, I, I sort of got a, a liking to that. What I'm going to do is just uh, right there. Because the this stuff here is going to have a tendency to just want to leak around the edges here. You can see that gel has a tendency to just kind of stay in place. So what we're going to do is we'll let this dry here. And once all this other stuff is dry, we're going to see if that's enough of a hold. It doesn't have to necessarily, the figure is light. It's just a piece of plastic. So I think that will be adequate, but you never know. We'll see how that works. So there's our tray. It's got all of the surfaces, textured, and everything else. So what we'll do is we'll let all this stuff dry. We're just going to do a simple priming on it. I right, just keep it as simple as I can. I'm, I may, just for the heck of it, actually try and airbrush some of this on. So what I will do is I'll take pictures for you to see. Oh, what the heck, let's, let's do that experiment. I am going to prime it with this. See, it's pretty light. Maybe even hit some white over that, and then I'm going to go with this stuff, then this, and maybe, yeah, maybe we do some, some airbrushing of it too. Because we're trying to experiment with that a little bit more. I won't do the whole thing with it. Just play with it a little bit. And we're going to be right back with that in just a second. So I'm just going to walk you through the stages that I did with the airbrush. It was really nothing complex. Super simple. You can see just a generic old thing of Steinol Res Primer there. That was the sandy color. Oh gosh, I think they call it neutral. Something like that. You can see we've got our two golden fluorescents off on the side and a couple of the Pro Acryl transparents. Again, it is maybe 35, 40 PSI, just using a Patriot 105. And first step was this. All it was was just the fluorescent yellow in the cup, no water, no thinner. I just put it in the cup, sprayed it. The interesting thing is that it, see, it's got kind of a greenish look to it. Actually, Kath and I were talking about that today, and she said, you know, that in some circles, this is called safety green or something like that. And it really is. It's, well, that's what gives it its really fluorescent properties. And you can see it really covered really darn well. I mean, the stuff is, I really like this. You could never have gotten say the Vallejo stuff through that airbrush. And I got to say, I've seen some of the other like scale 75 fluorescents go through an airbrush and they don't cover like that. I mean, that's yellow. It doesn't get any brighter than that. So now we're going to move on to the next one. You see, we got the orange and there's not quite so much coverage. I think I actually forgot to take the picture of this completely done with the orange, but you can see what we're doing. We're focusing around the rocks. We're starting to designate a few areas in our kind of open plateaus. Then we're going to move on here. Now it starts to get a little more interesting. This is where I put in the transparent orange. And look at how dark that is. Transparent orange, you think, oh, that's a really light color, even in the cup. That's I tried to get the cup in the picture so you could see. And look at the fluorescent yellow that's still on the cardboard there. You can see the difference. You can see the difference in how it just has it's dull it's more dull now that's fine on the rocks and you can see i really tried to stress filling in around those side edges of the rocks now it's it's glistening because it was still drying as i took this picture but i think you can see as the texture starts to emerge all the little rocks and everything this is the reason why i just did not want to take the extra time to just try and cover that all with a brush just would have taken longer than the airbrush and it just would have been rougher because you can see just how rough that texture is that definitely would have beaten up my i don't I'd say it would have pulled it off of the plastic but 
I just didn't have that much time to let it cure all the way. Now I could have set it to a, I don't know, 15 PSI, maybe a 10. If I did that though, and we we did this in the last video with the terrain, would have had to drop that maybe to 10, 15 PSI and also put some water in there. And you saw me do that on the terrain video and you heard me talking about it in the last one with the object source lighting. So once you get to the transparency and stuff, if you're not shooting through that super high air pressure there, you're going to want to thin it down. So we're going to move on here. This is another one of the Pro Acryls that's burnt red. It's one that I used a lot on the Lannisters. And look at that. It's, it's a nice juicy red. It's not too... Actually, I don't think I used the transparent red at all. I ended up using this burnt red. And look at that. It, see, it, it covers very nicely. You can still see some of that original fluorescent yellow that's out there. You can see the interiors of the circles, and you can see how they're getting darker. That's because I'm spraying at such a that shallow angle because I want to get at the underside of those rocks. Now we got our final picture over here, and you can see I could have done whatever. I could have done the blue black. I just I didn't have it down where I was airbrushing. I said, you know what, this is close enough. And I actually, you can see I'm going over the top of my my little rock areas. Now I think as a final thing, one last thing I did was to take some of the burnt red, it was either burnt red or sort of a almost like it was at the transparent brown, mixed it with that blue and did one more little hit over the top of that. Yeah, nothing fancy, but even right there, even right there, you can see it's for some people they'd say, hey, this is good enough for me. You could take that, take your little, it's kind of a liner brush, take some really bright yellow mixed with the fluorescent yellow, put a couple of what would look like veins of the really molten lava, and just put that in a few areas and boom, you're done. That's all it would have taken. For some of you, would have been perfectly happy with that. Now, obviously, we had to match bases, so we had to take that further, and we're going to do that next. We're going to do that part with the regular brushes, regular paint, and I'm going to set that up for you right now. So we went through the explanation of how we did the airbrush stuff with the primer, with the pro acryls, with the fluorescent paints. And this is what we've got right here. Now we're going to paint the rest of it. We've got our regular orange over here, transparent orange, transparent red. We've got our fluorescents here. We've got our pale yellow over here, blue black over there, transparent black over there. What we are going to do then, we're going to take this away eventually, but I just want to see what we have here. So you can see what we've got to do. We have to you know, think about matching our base. Let's, let's just grab a couple of these guys here. And you can see what it really involves is just kind of carrying some of that darker color out there. Now, as much as I like to leave these guys in here and do it, it's just impossible. And what we're also going to potentially do is kind of reverse engineer. We might go back and forth both ways to make these things line up. Now, I'm going to also grab like that. So you can see, it just as it is, it, it pretty much lines in there, but you can see how it's not totally... 100% perfect. Remember, last segment's going to be a magnetization. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this away because you really don't need to be getting that metal shining in your face. Uh, I certainly don't because it's driving me nuts. That's a little bit nicer. Now this is as far as I can back away the camera. It just it is what it is. We are going to take one of ye old these brushes here. Let's get down to it now. I think. I spy with my little eye here. Do something like uh, this. I'm just going to throw a touch of my opaque in there. Remember the yellow. That helps it keep from getting too pinkish. Because that's what it wants to do. As soon as you add that white in there, it's going to want to get pink 
Now the thing is to, if it does, we just we glaze over the top of it. The, the key is to make it lighter, and you can see what we're starting to do here. We're making these little channels through here. You'll, you'll notice on your bases whenever you're doing this that it's going to be really, really tough to actually do that in any real way on your bases. There's just not enough space, but here on this movement tray, there's certainly... Oh man, look at that. So we get some, some nice bright stuff going there. And we'll just we'll work our way around this now. Again, I may have to change some of these things because when we look at our bases, we may find that that doesn't really match what we're doing here. We're trying to build ourselves a little bit of a story with this. Maybe have to push things a little bit. I think you can see where this is going. It's, it's not rocket science. And you can see that the one of the main reasons for the airbrush, and I, I know I hopefully I mentioned this during the segment where we were going over the airbrush part. This was I just I had to kind of work faster on this. I did not have the time to let this sit overnight. If I could let this thing sit overnight, I could have done the more rigorous application of paint really just getting down in there with these brushes and really smashing the paint in here if I did that well there was a pretty darn good chance that I was going to be ripping away some of the uh, some of the sandy paste that I threw down here and I just I didn't have time to fix it the, the charity thing needs to happen and that's you know the deadlines are everything it's not just for charity things or for army painting things they're for tournaments. That's one of the reasons why people are staying up all night before the, the tournament. And they end up having really not the best games in the world because there's been no sleep. And that's been almost anyone that's ever been in a tournament. I, I know there's there's folks where maybe the painting's not that much of a important thing. And maybe they don't... The, the, they don't have to spend their three nights before the tournament furiously trying to get miniatures based and painted and freehanded and whatever other things you want to do to your army. You notice that I did try to keep the edges here on the darker side. We are going to let a little bit of that lava work its way all the way to the edge. Part of it was just it had to do with the airbrushing and the limitation to that. But I think you saw. Now, one of the reasons why the fragility of this and the gentleness of the airbrush came to mind is because of my terrain projects. And if I've already mentioned this before, and I just don't remember, my apologies. But the, the airbrush, when I do some of my terrain especially a lot of the bolt action stuff just by its nature it was not really wasn't the strongest stuff in the world it was going to survive gameplay but not necessarily attacking it with a brush and craft paints and everything else so the airbrush was the better option there and by far definitely the better option so you can see look at this. we go back into this with some of the some of the orange now because I started out with that fluorescent yellow, and man, that was, it was weird because it kind of looked green. It, it, I, I think you could, I don't know if the photographs necessarily showed just how green that looked. And it was kind of freaky at first, I got to tell you. Let's see, now we'll add a little bit of orange around here. I'm going to add the, the blues here to the rocks. That's going to give them a little bit of a change. But th this is kind of a, yeah, see how much, this is so gentle right here. I do not have to worry about destroying all that work that we did before with our rocks and gravel. And I think we've got a good balance of just, look at, look at that nifty texture right there. 
like I said, there's some things that the airbrush does really well. And being gentle on your terrain is, is one of those things, that's for sure. Oh, I'm going to get, yeah, just on the other side of this here. And yeah, I just whacked the thing over there. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. It's got to get actually some reflected light on it anyway, so we're going to grab a little bit of that red and do some of this. This is the, the nice thing that the airbrush also let me do. I, I think it was fairly effective at kind of just obliquely shooting from the side and doing a reasonable job of getting that object source lighting up onto my onto my rocks. I was glad about that. Just didn't have the time to paint all of that back in. And it also means you just you get to see a little bit more without having to watch a longer video. And you know, I'm always trying to find new types of videos for you. It's yes, I'm I always I'm gonna be doing a more traditional basing video thing for the the next couple of army projects. But this is part of army painting too. You gotta get this stuff around somehow. It doesn't carry itself much as we would like it to. It just doesn't. Still just trying to find, like I said, some lighter things here. We will do some changes if, if necessary. And I, I was just about to say, well, it's easier to just change the, the bases to this uh, but it kind of might work both ways there may be times where it's actually easier to change this than to change what's on the base so I make absolutely new promises none whatsoever now we will over here just look into there we go. Get a little bit of my lighting on that rock there. And if we're going to have lighting there, then we've got to have some light down here. That's for sure. So that was uh, sort of a wet and to wet right there. Now this, and that just got a little bit too greenish. We're going to make that now. More reddish, more orange here. I'm going to go back into my, it's my transparent orange there. I think that's a much better, much better look right there. Back to my, back to my fluorescent orange here. And like I said, you do as much or as little of this as you think is necessary. For me, there's there's something that's really going to determine just how far I need to go or if I need to back off. We also want to make sure we get our bluish color on our stones here. I'm going to Grab me a little more. There we go. So again, we here we have a. It almost looks a little bit on the greenish side. Some of that was a little bit of the airbrush overflow. It's something you just can't help it. It's another reason why I don't. My first instinct is not to use the airbrush because it's it's prone to that. I don't really. I just don't like masking things off. Now, we did have some success. Kathy actually put this on for it. It was uh, so the green stuff world. It was the masking fluid, and that actually worked pretty well. It didn't damage any of the paint. It, it seemed to keep the subsequent layers out. So that you might see that in future episodes. Again, there's you're never going to see airbrush-only figures it just 
I've never done that. And I have no intention of doing it. There's no reason for me to do that. But in cases like this where it really did make sense to utilize that tool of the airbrush, why the heck not use it? Why not use it? It's not like we're still spending probably just as much time here, if not more, just using our brushes. But there was there was a reason. There was a darn good reason for using the airbrush for the purpose I did. And that's all good. Now what I'm going to do here, I'll set this brush aside for a moment gonna grab myself a one of these liner brushes like that because they hold an awful lot of paint and they let us draw lines in some cases a little bit sharper skinnier lines maybe than otherwise possible now you can see we got a lot of sort of liquid nature to the paint here and it's it's seeping into all of the different rocks and such oh that that's fine it it actually i think to me it sort of enhances the it makes it look a little bit more craggy and a little bit less like a brush stroke you can see i can really now take advantage of these more wide open areas here and here Also, keeping in mind that I can go can go a little bit darker too, but speaking of darker, we're going to go lighter here because, well, remember, we've got the miniature that, that goes in this area is just a little lighter, so we're going to enhance some of, our, some of our lights just in this area just to make that figure match it a little better. And we've got... This needs to also be relatively light because this is one that Kathy did and the bases are just a little lighter. A little lighter than mine, so we will just lighten up that edge. Still not sure whether I'm going to throw black in there or not. I may, I may not. I reserve the right, as always, to change things at any time. When it's your project, you get to be the final arbiter of all such things. Now, I also I think I was already starting to make this one a little lighter just because I knew that Kathy's figure went back here. Here, let's just get some, some orange in there like you do. And what I will also do now... So I'm going to say that's, that's enough with our lighter stuff. Before we forget here, blue, black, that's some of the transparent black. Let's make sure you can see that. And this is exactly what I did on my bases now. Is it what Kathy did on hers? Certainly not because she had different colors. But guess what? If you... Just give it a little bit of thought. You can match any, almost any color with almost any color. And that's what we are going to basically do here. You know, I'm going to darken that down somewhat. We really want this one there. So a couple of things when you add this bluish gray color on here. Yeah, you're getting the, the contrast of a darker color, but... What else? It's it's a more bluish color versus those reds. Your reds look that much hotter. Your molten rock looks that much more molten. Because, well, you have something to compare it to. It's, it's all about that context. And as a word you will hear me utter over and over and over and over and over again. Because it's so important. That's just how important it is. Now, I will let that 
dry for a bit while while I take some of the red, some of my orange, and we're gonna touch of that black in there. A mm, little more. Nice, juicy, deep red. And what is that for? Well, that is for stuff like this. Remember, we did this on the bases too. Now, look how beat up that brush is right there. It's perfect. Guess what? For stuff just like this. Because in some ways, it's, yeah, it's making the... It's like, it's like I'm adding extra little rocks in here. Where maybe the lava is cool just a touch. Makes that look a little more interesting. Makes my lighter lava colors uh, look that much lighter. Not not bad, not bad at all. And you know what? I just didn't like that there, so I'm just gonna uh, cover it up. Didn't like it. Kept getting too pink, and I do not have the time or the will or the desire to screw around with that. So I just said, you know what? You get covered up. Sorry, that's how it goes. I've, uh, I guess, I guess we all kind of do that. We say, "Darn it, I want this thing to be this way," and sometimes you're just better off kind of you sort of count the losses and say, "Yeah, you know what? We'll just we'll just give up on this, and we'll just okay. We will we will submit, and we'll just gonna do the best we can with it. Get more of this." So let's see what that does right there all of a sudden and look at where we've got those little little rocks that were there we're, we're gonna take advantage of some of those we make some of that darker we're gonna gonna turn that into more of a channel by virtue of just doing this darker stuff here see it? look at that that just already with each of these little additions the tray gets more and more interesting more to look at and it also the other thing it's doing is sort of taking away one of the things that the airbrush likes to do and that's just sort of sit on the top of the surface there and not really get down not really get down into the kind of the depths of when you got this sort of rough terrain work on it, it just kind of wants to float on top a bit it's just something I, that I noticed when I would paint the terrain with the airbrush. <laughs> Get a little bit frustrated too. So, so instead of just a big old lake of that yellow color, see we we give it a, something a little more interesting, and it sort of mimics these larger rock formations. And this, I may go back into this a little bit after we film this here, but we just we don't want to get too too extended in these in these segments. And it's just a, a mix of very simple colors, a, a mix of the colors that we essentially used in the airbrushing part of this. We're just we're employing a different tool now. We're we're going with that more traditional brush. And yes, I can do more object source lighting there. Uh, maybe I just let this dry and I might do another little segment with that after this and then we'll get into the magnetization part of things. Now we did glue. Remember, we glue, glued one magnet to one of those bases and well, we'll get the verdict right away. Did, does it stick? Is that going to be enough to hold the figures in place, or do I have to do a little trick with the green stuff? So again, we're going to... See, look at that. We basically take some of the rocks that are already sitting. See, there's a couple over here. Just going to throw that dark color over the top of them. 
Now, like I've said before, I, I like to have the these cooler parts of the lava kind of connect to the rocks there. Like being in, in contact with those rocks actually cools down the lava just that much that it's just a little less molten. When you look at different references, it's going to show you different things. You know, sometimes you look at it and it's it's depending on what kind of lava it is. Not all lava is the same. There's the pillow lava and the all different kinds of lava. And so once I get this developed, I can even make more complexities in that pattern. Yeah, I hope the focus is sort of okay on this for you. The other thing I want to do is is now that we've that's mostly dry up there, we want to get back in, especially with this brush that's really it's got a nice rough edge to it because it's been destroyed on basing projects. Here, I'm going to just to put out some water here. Just bear with me on that. I'm going to clean up this guy here and there, that's enough. So we've got our blue black. We're going to take a touch of the. I need some of this too. This is the bright pale green, I think it is. It's sort of a verdigris color. I need just ever so slight amount of that to actually turns this all a bit more blue, believe it or not. And the other thing too is I can't go too too bright with this because then the rocks don't look really dark. This also enhances that sort of volcanic ash look. And it's not a dry brush. There's a ton of paint on here. Look at that. You can see it's even there's even a little bit of glistening from the liquid that's in the paint there. But look at that nice uh, filbert shape on the brush, which means it's pretty good for just kind of scumbling these colors across. Once again, we are trying to blend together the workings and machinations of two different people painted these not next to each other. Kathy painted most of hers first on her stream and then it was up to me to try and match as best as I could. Because, well, there was no way that I could have finished them all by Adepticon in, in time for the charity auction thing and, well, Adepticon, we was this, today's Tuesday. We would have been leaving today. Wednesday would have been our first full day. We would have been set up day. Which is, it's kind of weird because it seemed like Adepticon was just nowhere near now because it was this nebulous thing that went away. And all of a sudden now it's, it's like, yeah, we would, we'd be there. We would already have, this would have been our first night there. And probably in about five hours or so, we would have already been setting up the tables for Fort Wapple. Getting all the, the lights in place. Would have carried a car full of stuff towards Fort Wapple and try to set that thing up. Would have been doing my classes and all that. Everybody else would have been doing air classes and... Definitely more fun stuff than a lot of people are doing right now. And if you're wondering, I believe it is the, the autism. It's a, it's a fun for either autism awareness, it, but it definitely involves autism. And I think pretty much every single one of us knows somebody or some family or something along those lines that's affected by autism. I know I do. So that was why we thought we would 
help out on this. And, of course, we love the folks from Table Wars. You don't have to look too far on the channel to find Table War mats. And all of my battle reports are done on those. And, actually, well, look on the blog. Because there you're going to find tutorials, just step-by-step -step things, how to make terrain to match Table War mats. I think that's a... I mean, you just have to go look at them. It's not, it's not a couple hour long video. I will be making some of those, but well, all of that is just going to have to wait till after Adepticon. How's about... So we're going to say that's pretty nifty. What we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to check on the magnets real quick. Maybe do a little bit of the you know, reflected light on here. So we'll come right back with that in just a second. As I suspected, the magnet was just that proper balance of strength. And see, it, it's easy to take off. And even though it's not necessarily touching there, it has enough strength to hold that. Again, rare earth magnet, just simple thing I got on Amazon. I think you can see we have a re relatively decent alignment there. We, again, I can go back and add more, less or whatever. But what we want to do is add some more here. Now, I, uh, the glue is still wet, but... Okay, so that is when the glue is still wet. <laughs> That's why I tried to avoid doing that. I just wanted to see. I wanted to show you that. But that's how powerful the magnets are. So let's get this off of here. Again, get the shiny metal away from you. Let's do some let's do some lighting effects here. I'll make sure you can see this. Oh, let's get a uh, little bit of our little bit of our red going here too. Now it's interesting, Kathy. Just she focused more on yellow, and I focused more on the orangey red. Now we all and Kathy and I have always had different color palettes even our non-metallic stuff is a little bit different yeah we see each other's stuff all the time but even look at our 2d art and it's distinctly different just a very very different that's just kind of the, the nature of things and it's going to be that way for you too so and I, I try to mention this all the time. I don't know if I necessarily mention it often enough that if it doesn't look exactly like what I'm doing and instead of maybe being disappointed in yourself, just say, okay, this is maybe this is my take on it. This is my version of the shaded base coat. This is my version of the OSL because it has to work for you. It doesn't have to work for me. Because it's not my miniatures. I'm not the one who's doing the project. You're the one it has to work for. And it's got to suit with what you're comfortable with. It's got to suit within your 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 material means. Maybe you don't want to... There's certain projects you just don't want to... Or products you don't want to have to invest in. So you just say, you know what? I That I don't need to be investing in that. I don't need to get that. There might be another thing where you say, okay, that, that I got to have. And I say this because that's sort of every other week for me. Where I look at products, then I have to balance availability and price and that sort of thing. Let, let's say that the price is okay. Price is no problem until I need a whole bunch of them. Well, then that's an issue. Let's say... Price not a problem, don't need that many, but there's just no way due to the origin of where the product is manufactured, I'm going to get it in time. 
I, I have a tendency myself, and, and I think you guys do too, the best ability is availability. And there are times where I will stick with a product just because I know I can get it, I know where I can get it, and I know when I can get it. It might even cost more than another product. It might not even be as good as another product. That that's happened that's happened a lot. Where I've just said, you know what? Yeah, this other product would be better, but due to my own circumstances, when all is said and done, it's just this is going to be better for me because of this, X, Y, or Z. So I, we, we talk about techniques and, and that notion that I don't want to be giving you hard and fast rules. It's more like suggestions. And that, it goes for products too. It's why I try so many different products all the time. The two of them may do the exact same thing. They may be literally no difference in quality or even price or anything like that. They may be identical. In fact, sometimes I hope they are. That there's no, oh, look at this magic thing that only costs 50 cents and look at this thing that doesn't do it as well and costs $2. Because you have to worry about, not probably more than me, being able to get a product. For me, there there may be times where it's worth it for me to wait two months, potentially, for a product either to become available or, or just to get here. You know, for you, that starts to make a little less sense. Starts to make a little less sense. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that I'm getting into these these lighter a little bit lighter things here along the edges of the stuff. And I'm really gonna focus on this. Remember these are the ones where Kathy's figure is gonna be. So I'm gonna lighten the edges of the rocks that much more where she did hers. Now uh, most of you are probably not gonna be doing joint charity products like this or projects like this. Maybe so. I don't know. There's there's more than one husband and wife team out there. It, actually, it is. I mean, I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. It, it is interesting when you do work on stuff together, especially because we're both doing it for a living. I'm just working on basing right here, and that's, that's where probably the biggest advantage of actually the two of us working on miniature painting happen because I would do something and she say wow that's really neat but what if they did this and then she would do that and I'd say oh well now that's neat uh, what if we did this on top of it too and then she would turn around and all of a sudden we went from hideous horrible basing that we didn't even know you were supposed to paint your rocks and gravel to that was sort of our calling card. That's what we were sort of known for was basing. And in, in some ways, it's still that way all to 20 years later. Well, maybe like 17 years later. So it, the, it's not like you have to have your spouse painting with you, but there is something about working, well, pfft, I guess now is not the time to say paint in groups. However, there's this thing that a certain politician invented called the Internet, which you can use, and Google Hangouts works. As long as you're not going on YouTube, Google Hangouts is just fine. And actually, that is, this is another little preview again, those one-on-one -on -one classes, that is, if I'm going to be doing those, they're going to happen on Google Hangouts because they work just fine with this. It means I can do all my scenes. It means I can do my whiteboard. A whole bunch of things that are actually, to me, vital for being able to do the one-on-ones. But look at how much we've been able to, to do on this. 
has it really hasn't really taken us a hideous amount of time the, pretty much everything happened on camera except for a, a little bit of addition of some rocks and gravel and then the airbrush stuff which believe me I spent more time explaining it to you than it did to do it it took longer just to take the pictures and make those screens and get them up on the thing than it did to airbrush it so that's another I say that's another little plus towards the airbrush side there but yeah that is uh, well I will obviously have a little bit of a gallery here at the end and that'll show you how everything looks together and all their glory here in the movement trip well I keep going on a movement tray because it's square and it's got circles and all I keep thinking is song ice and fire and the reason I'm thinking of that is because I'm not sure if I said this in the last video but the Baratheons are back uh, I'm not painting stuff for cool mini or anything like that but all of a sudden there's a commission now and, and those those are back on the menu because someone's actually going to be buying those so I will finish off that group there and that'll just I'll be able to finish off that army painting series now I think it was I think it was army painting series 12 so there there's some good news on that now yeah I'll just keep going here sometimes like like this to me this is the relaxing part and I'm gonna go back into some of my darker darker reds here and I'm just gonna I'm looking to pick up of some of these again those rocks that I scattered over the top basically a mid-range gravel that I threw on there and then remember our skinny little where'd you go this guy here let's get some of this the orange helps to keep it from getting too otherwise it would get almost a bit purple and the idea is here now I'm gonna get some sharper edges there you know I'm gonna even more black because we yeah see look at this look at that kind of a little trail of rocks and let's do that over here it's all about just trying to create a little bit more visual interest in these places I mean is it a hundred percent accurate to real lava who the heck knows I bet you you could you, you you google lava you see a million different things and sometimes this is my lava this is lava according to me and while obviously there's always going to be those folks that say in, insert well insert snide remark here or there like wow lava really looks like this or that you just say you want to do lava you you make it however you want to do it on your own time and your own project now maybe in your world you don't get quite as much shall we say kibitzing undesired kibitzing where people are just gonna proffer their opinions to you whether you want them to or not but sometimes that happens especially well in that certain public forum named space nook well people are always willing to offer opinions there and to say that's that's fine that's your lava this is my lava that's how I'm doing it so what we are going to do here is just 
set you aside. Where's my thing here? I'll put you there. I'm going to move this. See if we can get this more centered. Change our focus like so. Put you in here. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I, we can, I wish you could see it easy that the little rocks right here, they're actually lining up perfectly with what's going on here. I'm super happy with that. Yeah, that's nifty. Uh, again, I'm as much as I'd like to. Well, maybe that's solid enough. Okay. A magnet didn't go away. I'm just gonna let that one sit for a little bit longer. This is a this is a good test right here. Uh huh. Yeah, that that's that's close enough. Close enough. Yep. Oh, let's try this guy. I think his magnet's in good shape. Yeah. So there we there we go. Well, if you can see how strong that is, he's still in this tray. So I'm gonna call that a success. I am really, really happy about that. I'm not, I'm not gonna mess with any more of these. But so what I'll do is we'll we'll take some final pictures of this, and I'm gonna say. I'm really happy about this because, hey, I haven't really done something like this before. This is fun. And, and I hope this just gives you some ideas. It's not like you got to do it this way or whatever, but you've done. we've done a lot of this lava stuff, right? We have never done something like this before with it, though. So thanks again, everybody. I appreciate your support. Like I said, especially in these days, weird times, lots of weird stuff going on. I appreciate all your your help all the the messages that people send of encouragement and the folks that have really stepped up this month i really appreciate that and hopefully once we sort of get clear of these next this next week then things really start to take off again so thanks again everybody and i will catch you on the next workbench episode